I think one really big topic that we're constantly <clears throat> publishing on on Lost Remote is, you know, the Super Bowl had this many social comments, the Grammys had this many social comments, and then lots of great arguments over ratings versus social TV comments. So I was hoping um, you could each maybe share your thoughts on, you know, what is the value in social TV data, and you know, maybe where you see that kind of evolving. And Scott could uh, start with you if you wanted to okay. share what you're learning. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm still waiting to see better measures than, you know, tweets on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, and we still seem to sort of be stuck at that, or, or we're stuck in some proprietary point measure by one of the vendors in the analytics space, and it's hard to, it's hard to sort that. Um, my other litmus test right now is I just want to see one of these analytics vendors say, you know what, the conversation around this show is such, so deficient that it's in the noise level and it's not meaningful. And I haven't seen them do that yet either because a lot, a lot of, and we see this on our platform, a lot of shows just actually don't have, um, you know, a lot of conversation going on. So um, I, I certainly believe that that, that that round trip event of driving social media conversation is starting to factor back into ratings. And I think there's certain data starting to emerge to prove that. Uh, and um, I think we in the industry have a lot of work to do to strengthen that feedback loop and then also figure out where it's real and where it's not. Um, we've, we've invested a lot in analytics in our platform. We measure second by second viewership, you know, what, where you are in the show and what you're interacting with and what you're, what you're talking about. And so analytics is, is essential to figuring out what really works in this, uh, in this emerging media. Thanks. And, and Gail, in terms of you know, Discovery's advertisers, do they ask for social TV data information? Is that something that you see is important to them? And then also the same question, how do you kind of think it's affecting your whole department and job? Uh, that's a good question about ad sales. I don't know just because that's a different department. I work with them closely, but I haven't um, ever been asked, oh, this advertiser wanted to know how did this show do on social last night because they're trying to see what value they got from their, their spend. So right. um, I, don't, I don't actually know the answer to that question. Um, I mean, listen, we'd love to be able to prove the ratings social link. I don't think there's anyone who works in this business who's not, you know, looking for that and hoping for it, and it certainly would justify my salary and my yep. team's salary, and it'd be great. Um, I, in the absence of having that, uh, minus a few limited studies that we've seen, um, we focus on other stuff, and analytics is, is very important to our team as well. Um, you know, we have a fan base of I think we're at 53 million fans. So then that's across all of our, all of 75 pages. And some of those are duplicated, obviously, because some people are fans of more than one page. But, you know, I can't look at that number and deny that there's an impact there. There's, these, are, these are people who have raised their hand and said, I'm going to publicly, you know, state my allegiance to these brands and these shows, and I'm going to invite you into my news feed, which I consider to be a rather intimate space. So. I don't take that lightly, that fact that we are invited in there and that we have a, a place there. So, you know, we look at fan counts. We look at things like, um, you know, how much are people interacting with our, with our posts? Are they commenting? Are they sharing? Are they clicking through to content on our site? Are they watching video streams? Are they um, checking in? I'm not, you know, check-ins check is kind of a, a murky area, but it's, it's helpful. It's dispositive in some way. So, you know, we look at all of that and we track it and we're kind of trying to find, you know, what's the perfect dashboard that I can, like, log on and just see it all right in front of me. Um, you know, you talked about deficient conversation. You know, we find sometimes a show will just do amazingly on social and we'll be so excited and so proud and then the ratings will tank. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's not always a correlation between the conversation and what we're seeing. Sometimes shows do really well and they're appealing to an older demographic or the topic for whatever reason isn't one that people want to talk about. So it's, it's something that's in the mix and I'm not, I don't know what the formula is and it's certainly something we pay a lot of attention to, but I think we're all grappling with what is that, you know, what is that formula? What is that dashboard? How do I justify? How do I prove it um, beyond just kind of instinct and, you know, what I think is kind of common sense. Yeah. Sabrina, how is it a bit different at a network that you know doesn't have advertisers? 
Yeah, I mean, I think for us, we feel, to be honest, a lot of the same things. I mean, I think this is, this space particularly is the Wild West, and we're, I think everyone who's in the, who is in this role <laughs> realizes that, um, and we're all trying to find value. I think for us, I mean, we're, we're not as tied to the ratings um, because we're not ad supported, um, but, you know, we would be lying to say that ratings didn't matter to us. I think there's a reality of, of the fact that a lot of our programming is time shifted, so we look at aggregate ratings rather than, than live. Um, and, and that sort of affects social, the social conversation. It's, it's different when it's time shifted. Um, but for us, what, where it's been really valuable is that we've we spent a lot of time using social tools for um, qualitative analysis rather than quantitative analysis. So, um, you know, we use it to understand, you know, what are people saying? Like, what, one of the things that I think was the most, um, and to go back to your kind of aha moments, one of the things that we realized, like, in one of the early seasons of True Blood is that using social, that the social team was actually able to understand exactly what the moments from last night's episode were that, that really kind of stuck out. And sometimes you can anticipate those by reading the scripts and, and you know, kind of knowing, you know, knowing the show. And sometimes you can't. Like the, I forget what season it was, like two or three. Um, you know, we thought the queen, and when the queen came out, that she was going to be the thing that everyone was talking about the next day. So in, in planning, we had developed, like, all of this extra content around the queen, all this stuff that could be shared, video, whatever. Meanwhile, Godric, you know, Eric's maker, was the thing that, the person that, the new character that everyone loved. And we were able, you know, social saw it happening instantly, was able to come back, you know, we're part of the wider digital platform team, come back to our content teams and say, like, hey, who knew, Godric, what can you create that we can kind of send out and use to share? And, and that kind of like, um, that kind of qualitative real-time feedback has been really helpful in helping us build out, ex you know, extensions and engagement things and helping to build, you know, engagement metrics on something like HBO.com, um, you know, to just kind of underscore the ratings correlation. We, we absolutely, um, would love to say that you know social and ratings are tied together, but we know for certain that they're not in our world. So Boardwalk Empire, you know, either the number two or the number three rated show for us, you know, depending upon you know how you look at their ratings, um, not from a social perspective. Mm. Just older audience, different type of you know, just a different type of engagement. Um, not not the type of programming that drives that same that same kind of conversation. So. Great. Hulu's trying to, you know, embed into Facebook a lot more and give you the opportunity to just automatically be sharing everything. We've seen that a lot with, you know, other media companies like the Washington Post and sharing what articles you're watching. I guess, Gail, do you think people want to, you know, do you think there are going to be enough people who want to just automatically share everything they're watching? Yeah, it's funny. I just came from a, a social media conference this afternoon with the guy who, from Washington Post who sort of helped develop that social reader. And, you know, I'm not a big fan <laughs> of that social reader because I don't necessarily want people to know what articles I'm reading. I think that's very personal and sometimes very private. And um, I think it's a generational thing. I think you find that, and they were saying this in the presentation, that the social reader audience is much, much younger than not even just the newspaper audience, which that's one thing, but even the .com, the WashingtonPost.com audience. Right. So, um, I mean, I think there are people who have a higher tolerance for that kind of public um, sharing of what they're doing. Um, it wouldn't work for me, but I, th I think there's a subset of people who that does not bother them. They're, they've grown up in this era of oversharing right. and, um, and on Foursquare and Twitter and just this constant connection and sharing of minutia of life. And I would think maybe with a few exceptions, they probably don't care if people know what they're watching. Yeah, Scott, how is Umami working with Facebook, and what do you think? Uh, I mean, today, our, you know, our inter integration with Facebook's fairly limited. We're, we're doing some interesting stuff going forward, but you can, you can share what you're watching and make comments and attach these freeze frames um, to, to kick off conversation about what you're watching. But uh, I think the pendulum is going to swing the other way. I mean, I think it, whether you're, you're 18 or you're 35 or 55, um, you know, um, it's kind of a basic marketing principle. When you're communicating with somebody, you, you, 
there's, there's some intent. You're trying to say something about yourself or you're trying to say something that you think is important to them. And I think the oversharing stuff will, will swing back because at some point it just dilutes everything and it's just you not learning anything about that person or about yourself. And I think we're in kind of the overshare mode now and it'll, it'll swing back and they'll, they'll be you know, maybe not Facebook, maybe these other players who are starting to try and, you know, in a domain specific way like TV, try and figure out how to kind of filter that down so that I don't, I don't actually want to see everything Gail watches, but I might want to get some sort of roll up of like, well, you know, Gail's watching this kind of programming now and therefore I might want to watch that. You know, and if she doesn't want to spend the time to kind of filter that conversation down, maybe there's some tool or some service in between us that can do that. I don't have time, I mean, it's not just because I'm not 20, but I don't have time to, to kind of consume everything that everybody else around me is consuming. Right. I think there's the reality of the digital record of it as well, which I think even the younger generation is starting to understand, particularly a generation that has, you know, the generation that's coming up that like whose photo was on Facebook before a lot of them before they were born, yeah. um, wow. which I think is a strange, you know, is, is going to change that generation inherently. And, and, and I don't know, I think a lot of it's being driven by Facebook as well, like Facebook pushing for this, you know, implicit sharing. Um, I think that like HuffPost just launched their Open Graph 2.0 implementation um, and they, I think did a much better job with the user controls than the Washington Post did. Um, so I think people still do want to control that and, and do want to kind of be able to toggle it on and off um, as appropriate, no matter what demographic you are. I just think there's a, you know, I think, I think there's also a race to be the first to execute some of these things and, you know, to be the first in experimenting and, um, you know, to be the first in the announcement with Facebook. Um, where you're pushed to kind of go, I think, I think Facebook, with every announcement they make, pushes you one step too far, like one <laughs> step further than the public is comfortable with, and then they wait for everyone to like be pissed off, and then they pull it back a second. So that seems to be their their mo, and I don't, I don't know that they're going to stop that. It seems to be working for them.